In working with the regression line, we're often interested in the question, is there actually a relationship between the variables? And we have the Pearson product correlation coefficient, the r, which can help us measure the strength of the relationship. But before we measure the strength of the relationship, we really should first determine whether or not there actually is a significant relationship. And that's what the hypothesis test for regression does. It looks to answer the question, is there a relationship or is there not? And there's two ways to test if there's a relationship. Testing r, the correlation coefficient, and m, the slope of the, of the regression line, is exactly the same. In other words, we'll get the same conclusion about whether or not there's a relationship if we test r for significance or if we test m for significance. I think testing r is easier, so we are going to test r mainly because the formulas are a little simpler to work with. So let's take a look at that. When we're testing the r, the Pearson product correlation coefficient, the null hypothesis is going to be that rho, rho is the Greek letter for r, rho is the population parameter for the correlation coefficient. We're going to say rho is equal to 0 for the null hypothesis. And for the alternative hypothesis, its rho is not equal to 0. Now, to put in words what this means, rho equals 0. Rho is the measurement of the relationship. So by saying the relationship is equal to 0, we're saying there is no relationship between the two variables. If we say rho is not equal to 0, then we're saying there is a relationship. And that's what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that there is a relationship. And it turns out this is a t-test, which can be calculated with t, the test statistic, being equal to r times the square root of n minus 2 all over the square root of 1 minus r squared. Now, this can be written two different ways, actually. You'll see it also written as one big square root. And we can do that if the r is squared. So you might also see the formula written like this, r squared times n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared. Both of those are exactly the same. I'm going to use the first one. Doesn't matter which one you use. So if these are the formulas, let's take a look at doing a hypothesis test. Let's say we want to know if there is, is there a significant relationship between missing assignments and exam scores. And we're going to do this test at the alpha equals 0.15 level. We've been working with these missing assignments, exam scores, correlation a lot in this chapter. We already found out using Excel that r, the correlation coefficient, is negative 0.69. We've already talked about n is 6. There were six data values in our test. And so with that in mind, we're going to go through the six steps of our hypothesis test to see if that r is significant. Do we have a significant relationship, or do we fail to show that there's any relationship at all? So for our start, we're going to define the hypotheses. And for our null hypothesis, we said that was going to be rho is equal to 0. And the alternative hypothesis is rho is not equal to 0. Rho is the measurement of the relationship for the population. So we're saying no hypothesis, no relationship. Alternate hypothesis, there is a relationship. We can then draw a picture to represent what we're doing with this t distribution. We can draw our picture of this two-tailed test because it's not equal to 2. We can be either bigger than or smaller than. This is a two-tailed test. So C, we're going to find the test statistic. 
And we already said the test statistic is r times the square root of n minus 2 all over the square root of 1 minus r squared. Plugging in our values, r we found out in a previous video was negative 0.69 times the square root of the sample size 6 minus 2 all over the square root of 1 minus negative 0.69 squared. And something I want to notice is when we square that negative, it becomes a positive. So I'm just going to drop the negative there in the denominator because I know squaring it's going to make it positive anyways. Keep the negative in the numerator, but I'm going to drop it in the denominator just because it's not going to matter. When I do that, in my calculator, I'm getting negative 1.91 is my test statistic. So if that's my test statistic, we should be able to find a p-value right off of Excel. And if you remember, on Excel, we can do a two-tailed t-test with t.dist.twotails. Open a parentheses. We're going to put the test statistic 1.91, which with the two-tailed test has to be positive comma, the degrees of freedom. And remember, if the sample size is 6, the degrees of freedom is 2 less than the sample size. With regression, degrees of freedom is 2 less than the sample size. So the degrees of freedom is 4. When I put that into my Excel sheet, I get 0.1287 for my p-value, which is going to lead to the decision where I look at the fact that my p-value is equal to 0.1287 and my alpha is equal to 0.15, my p-value is smaller. And anytime my p-value is smaller, we will reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And I want to get it all on one screen, so I'm just going to Add a side box here. You can go down below in your notes. But f, the interpretation, is going to focus on the alternative hypothesis, putting it in context. What does it mean that rho is not equal to 0? What does it mean that rho has a relationship? Well, it means that there is significant evidence. because we successfully rejected at the alpha equals 0.15 level that there is a relationship between missing assignments and exam scores. Now that we've established that there is a significant relationship, now it would make more sense to start talking about what's the confidence interval for where that uh, relationship falls. What is the strength of that relationship being negative, being a strong negative relationship? Now it makes more sense to talk about all those things because we've proved the relationship is actually significant.